Hey, I'm on. All right, so this is a demo with my uh, esteemed colleague. Do you want to give your name? Tom. Tom. And uh, I've treated Tom before off and on. As you can tell, he's almost as big as me. He's working on it, trying to get my size. <laughs> but he blew out a rib. And what's great is about ribs generally, from a physical medicine point of view, is they're very easy to usually set. And as a chiropractor, when we set ribs, a lot of times it, you get tremendous results. Um, when the rib's out, it can give you more pain than the spine being out. Usually it's much sh uh, sharper, hurts with breathing, moving, everything, because the rib cage supports uh, a lot of things. And so uh, I got a history. He was carrying 60 pound dumbbells from one place to the other. And you think that might, where you think it happened. Yeah. Okay. And, you, and it felt like what? It felt like a little bit of a separation around the root cage of the back. Okay, in the back here? Yeah. Okay. So I'm basically just below the angle of his uh, scapula, about T9 S, T10, we can just keep the camera there. And so I had already preliminarily started muscle testing. I hope I, is it preliminary? I preliminary, know, okay, didn't really. Keep. Bring your wife in for that one. All right, cool. That would be a good idea. All right, so I'm gonna check his left serratus anterior. The reason for that is serratus anterior attaches to all of the ribs except for the two floating ribs. So clinically, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I always wanna check that. I also wanna check the abdominal muscle, especially the external obliques, because they interdigitate with the serratus anterior like that. So if the rib goes out, as a chiropractor, we set it, but as an applied kinesiologist, we wanna go, why? So push up towards the ceiling, push up, and it blows out on him. I'm gonna check rhomboid because that is the antagonist to serratus anterior, uh, anterior and um, uh, so middle, middle trap too. Bring it into your side, squeeze your elbow towards your spine. Okay. That's blown out too. But you notice this, you have to be really good with muscle testing. Watch your patient, squeeze this arm towards your side. Squeeze good. It actually tests strong. When he squeezes his hand together like when he's holding the dumbbell, Easy peasy. So, you're not trippy? That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> so, that's something I'm thinking about. Now, when any muscle contracts and it blows another muscle out, we think of reactive muscles. So the spindle cells are set too high, meaning that when they start to come together, it overrides the other muscles. So that is something I need to look at. So I wanna go back to the muscle testing again. If you notice with the serratus anterior, push up. It was just weak in the clear. It's gonna squeeze his hand and push up. It just remains the same, that's what we're looking for. Now what's remarkable is, elbow straight, this is his right serratus anterior, push up, just push, push up again. Okay, and one more try, pull, good. Then take your left hand and squeeze it. See? So that's a reactive muscle. So I can adjust the rib, and I can get the muscles functioning, but just by observing that, which a lot of times you may not catch and I might not catch, but lucky for us, we had time today to find it. So I wanna think of anything that causes that hand to squeeze, which muscles. So what we can do is you can do it two ways. You can try to individually contract the muscle and then test a strong indicator muscle to see, or you can therapy localize the spindle cell, which is in the middle third of the belly of the muscle. So it'll be easier for us to have him TL the belly than to test um, digiti profundus, digiti brevis, lumbricals, that kind of thing. We can start with that. So we just need any strong indicator muscle. Bring your head forward and push your head into my hand. So that's his next flexors. He can take his whole hand and generally all the spindle cells for all the flexors of the hand are right in that area. And it blows them out. Now it's a product of which one? So that's where your palpation comes in, ladies and gentlemen. You can never get too good at palpation. Good. So he's just gonna touch just that part, just with his finger pads over that area. And push, and that blows them out. So I wanna be really specific. Now I'm down to one finger, because not D finger. And my best guess is here, thanks for laughing because I think that's fun. <laughs> and push. Okay. 
nope, not that one. We're going to be highly skilled doing surgery without incisions. It's there. So I have to spindle cell that guy down. And we have reactive muscle. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. So he's going to take his whole hand now. It's like throwing out a big net. And hold. It's good, just to make sure. Remember what brought you to the party. Go back on your work. Good, we're good. So that would mean that if we take a strong indicator muscle, and if we're finished, push up towards the ceiling. Squeeze that left hand. Okay, if it doesn't cause weakness, we're done. But anytime you do muscle and AK, you want to chase it back to the spine usually. If it's a compaction injury, you want to check occiput and sacrum, but if it's a specific muscle origin insertion, GTO spindle cell, and reactive muscle, you want to think more nerve supply. So with palpation, take this finger, but not, you know, he's going to touch that joint, which is about C6. Okay, bring this here, open your hand. And the rhomboid tested strong with his hand open last time. Squeeze this elbow towards your spine. That's not the one, that was my best guess. Now look who's gonna get my second best guess. A little lower, about C6 posterior. That does it. Now, that could be a subluxation period. We wanna see what specifically caused that reactive muscle. So here's what we can do. We can take this finger, touch here, bring his head forward. Then he's going to squeeze his hand and hold. That goes specifically to that. The T elbow with the strong indicator muscle, and it turned on with that. So that is related to that. I want to get as specific as possible. We're kind of getting into the minutiae of AK um, in the sense of trying to find it that way. So I want to make an adjustment here. And when we stop for a moment and think, all this for a rib, I could have just set up on his rib and be right. All right, so I want to adjust that, that's C6 posterior. So I write that in my imaginary blackboard. I'll get back to that. Okay. I want to really find out what happened to that serratus anterior. And hold. So I'll just have him TL origin. So let's take your hand. So, so it's origin. And then uh, he's going to take his hand away and then let it relax. And what I'm gonna do is, because he is so massive, but not as massive as me, and massive in a good way, um, is I'm gonna get underneath his shoulder blade, if I can, and I'm just gonna stir up where the serratus anterior attaches to the front anterior medial border of the scapula, and push up. That actually strengthens him, so I wanna do all of that. So just to save time, I'm just gonna do origin insertion, GTO, and spindle cell, but just to show you how this works, is I think the trigger point for that is there. So when the muscle gets strained, the primary weak muscle may have, may have origin insertion, GTO, spindle cell, may have one, two, or all of them. That is not, a, that trigger point that I felt like he had didn't TL, so I'm not worried about that, I just keep moving. That one does, so I wanna make sure of that. And then, to the best of my ability, I'm going to have him kind of go more into the GTO is where with my, uh, my um, remembrance of the cadavers when I was in school, where the musculotendinous junction is for the serratus anterior. That, shows, that's, that doesn't show up either, so I'm not going to worry about that. Now, what will happen is I'm going to fix him and do origin insertion, GTO, and spindle cell. And then what I'm gonna have him do is I'm gonna have him re-TL if it re-weakens and I just finish the work, or I can have him do a push-up, do a few of them, and then have him come back and see does the muscle stay strong because the serratus anterior is paramount in doing push-ups. Okay. So, but let's look for that rib. I mean, that's the reason why he came in. So something roughly about there. Now, from my clinical experience, when a rib goes out and people feel it radiating to the front, that rib can be hanging out for a while. Generally in my practice with my patient base, with my years of experience, is when a rib's out 
and it's just localized the posterior part they're usually very easy to set and we're finished with but when it radiates to the front that can be a problem so i'm going to have him scoot back a little bit knees together if you can do your arms like this so i'm going to check his abdominals to make this i want to do the fist because it could be tl and ac joint that's why we're doing that so this muscle test is for the left external oblique he's going to push towards me he ain't got nothing. And then he's going to push towards me. He's got something. So those are the obliques. So I've got to fix that too. Okay. I'm going to do internal obliques. Sit up as good as you can. I'm going to push in this direction and hold. That remains good. So it runs in this, uh, it runs in this direction. Okay. All right. So those are the two main muscles I want to look at. Generally, if I start to go into the abdominals or the rib that radiates to the front, I'm starting to look pretty good. So he's going to take his hand, and we already touched the area of persuadus anterior, and it strengthened it. So I'm going to just have him touch the linea alba, where that muscle uh, connects to turn the beast away. Okay. Bring your fist back, Hail Caesar. Pull. And I want to work that. So I want to first do some origin insertion, adjust C6, then I want to look at the rib. Okay. So let's just cut it here. So we're going to continue on this conversation, and uh, I palpated it was his ninth rib in the back has gone posterior inferior based on the challenge. I'm going to probably show you the challenge. But uh, a couple things is um, when you take a history of the patient is Tom also had a, a, a lab test with elevated liver enzymes. And so when I hear T9, T10 in Chinese medicine, that relates to liver, liver gallbladder. So out of all the ribs in, in his body, which he has 24, why the ninth rib? So from my point of view is it was the weakest link in the chain. Well, then how was it the weakest link in the chain? Well, if we think completely musculoskeletal forces of physics, we go, well, that was just weakened. Who knows why? It's the way the muscle pulled, that kind of thing. Yes, but you can't do anything with that information. You can't explore anything. You just write it off and let the mystery just go go away and you're, you're kind of focused uh, knowing his history and what i do this is a great opportunity to ask his body what we need to do so when i uh, was off camera i scanned through him in the and um, it came up gallbladder and i had to i wanted to take good care of him so off camera i figured out a few things that we needed to do for that once we cleared that slate it went right to liver and i can talk about this later in class as to how i got there and that type of thing so I'm going to go pulse points, and that's what I was going to do is like, hey, it's T9, let me check pulse points. Do the pulse points correlate with that particular rib? So bring this up, arms to your sides, good push up. Okay. So he's going to go to this pulse point over here, here, and here. This is on the left side. Bring this up and hold, and that weakens him out. And I just went right to liver. So he's just touching mediumly, mediumly. He's going to push in deep with his finger towards the bone at the end, and then barely touch, push, and that's the arm. So it went weak with him pushing deep, that's the liver. So we go to a liver-related muscle, which is your pec major sternal. Turn it this way, push towards this hip. Solid! And then we do the left one, turn, push, and not so solid. And then the alarm point, remember pulse points, muscles, alarm point and turn and push towards me elbows straight you gotta make sure that elbows straight y'all that doesn't do it push push again good that's strong i was when you do these and you miss it the first time you want to scour around the alarm points or any therapy localization because you could just be that much off you're that much off on a tl you're that much off minutes wise if you're that much wrong with the patient and the personal trauma of you going through Maybe this doesn't work. Maybe I should choose another profession. Uh, I have a cousin who does roofs. Maybe I can do that. If you're making a lot more money now than what I'm doing here, I'm not going to, you know. That was funny, wasn't it? All right. <laughs> so I want to keep that in mind. So right now on the chalkboard, I got serratus anterior. I got external oblique. I want to do origin insertion, GTO spindle cell, check nerve supply, and then fix liver. But with elevated enzymes, and uh, that I, 
I, I'm going to bring out some Antronex. I checked a bunch of supplements on him already to save time. So Antronex tested very strongly on him and Standard Process makes that product and uh, Biotics makes a product like it. And what it does is it opens up his portal circulation to help him get a lot of stuff out. He first showed gallbladder, it was more energetic. Um, he fixed it on that level. This one was a little bit more physical. So the Antronex, now that the gallbladder is willing to take what it gives it and get rid of it, and you get the Antronex in there, I'm hoping it'll just declog them and make them feel better in any kind of weather if he's wearing shorts or with a sweater. So I want to adjust. So I'm going to do, remember we found that C6 related to the uh, reactive muscle. Let's do that. Okay, go to normal. C6 in the house. It may make an explosive sound you can hear from here to Laos. Probably not though. Take a breath in and let it go. I already challenged it. So it's posterior. And there we go. Okay. And then what you want to do is Hold those straight, push towards that hip. Take the strong indicator muscle, and that is the best muscle to use to go back to the spine. Touch right at C6, and see does it re T L. Push, no, okay, so I'm done with that. I'm gonna have him squeeze his hand, his left hand. I'm gonna retest the strong indicator muscle, and push. Ah, we still have a problem there. So while his hand's there, I want to think maybe I needed to do more work on that. Maybe I missed the spindle cell. Maybe I didn't get all of his neck yet. Okay. One way to try that out is open up. All reactive muscles will weaken all strong muscles. Squeeze. I can have him, as he squeezes, touch right here, right? Flatten your hand out, cover as much of that forearm as possible. Squeeze. Maybe there's enough. I didn't get that whole spindle cell and push, there's no change. So that's not it, I did a good job there. Now let's look to his cervicals again. Squeeze, bring this up, and push. Not his cervicals, but maybe it could be out on the other side. Squeeze, bring this up. Nope, when I see that, I think love it, brother. So C6 goes with T12. So can you put your hand right there? Still squeezing, touching T12. Bring this up. T12. Man, one simple rib, and now I gotta do all this. But he's worth every moment of my time. Lay face down. <laughs> wow. Oh, you wanna do a plug for your business? No. Oh. <laughs> I love this name of his business because it's the same name as Michael Diamond, who's the Beastie Boy, one of them, his production label. So. I really want to take care of this reactive muscle because every time he grasps, can blow that muscle out that I just fixed, making the patient more than likely come back with the same thing. So I want to get. If it can happen that quickly, I want to take care of that first. So it feels like it's posterior on the right to me with palpation push up. So I'm going to ask the body, is that right? And it says, yep, yeah. lay on your left side, facing the window. So you can never go wrong with doing both, both palpation and muscle testing, in my opinion. It doesn't matter how good of a palpationer you are or how good you are as a muscle tester, you just bring them both together, you're going to be better at both. Hold that there, don't despair. Take a breath in and let it go. There we go. Oh, lay face up. Did we fix it? Bring this knee up in the A, arms to your sides, push up. Squeeze your left hand. Good. Take your hand, retouch T12. Remember that brought me to the party. Squeeze. We're out of there, okay? So now I want to do origin insertion. I still got to adjust this rib, that's why I came in. All right. Woo, doggy. Ugh. 
Fudge. Fudge! What was that? Fahrenheit! Was it just muscle? It is it just muscle. Yes, it is, Tom. <laughs> yes, it is. That's just 60 pounds in this man's hand. That's nothing. How could that blow out a rib? I don't know, but don't you think that's a great question? Isn't it wonderful that you, you know, you go into school and you got all these questions and they give you all the answers. And then when you have more questions, they say, shut up and listen to us. And then you get out of school and you don't even know how to answer questions anymore. You don't even trust your questioner. Your questioner is your best part of being a doc. Remember, you heard it from the source. <laughs> so I'm just doing origin insertion basically on both. The serratus anterior and the, the oblique. I'm going to go down the linea alba. Dancing queen! Linea alba or alba. Do you guys get it? <laughs> Excellent. My next show is in Schenectady, New York. <laughs> be there with the flying fantastics and the aristocrats. This guy's like all muscle. It's like if Hercules was living today, it'd be this man. Ah. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> okay. okay. So my best idea for that um, trigger point if there is one in that oblique is there and hold, then I was right, okay? I'm frequent, I'm about 80%, meaning I find it and I ask the body, am I on the right spot? So I'm about 80% after 20 years of doing that push, which isn't bad, but it means I'm a B student. Bs get you through school. And then I'm going to have him, and then now straight to anterior, that muscle goes all the way up into the first rib. So I got to get up all up in his armpit. So you can't forget that with the straight to anterior. Ah, <laughs> oh, this causes a cramp like that. The old spasm. That's a neurological reaction. <laughs> Hasn't caused a cramp in my back. Face down. Oh. oh shit. It's alright. It's gotta get rid of his cramp. Kinda where his rib is, huh? So he's gonna take his hand. Now to get underneath that scapula is kinda hard, so I usually put the patient's hand right behind their back and just lift that shoulder up. I'm using my knee. I don't normally do it this way, but for someone at this size, I have to. And you can imagine if you worked on me, you'd probably have to do the same thing because of my size. <laughs> I'm actually bigger than him. I'm just trapped in this body. <laughs> so I'm getting underneath that shoulder blade. We did C6 in the mix, since he's here, I'm going to do T10, uh, T9. Now, um, I'm going to do this on a side posture because I have to reach around his body. When he has his arms like this, it's, he creates such a large circumference, I can't get through it. So I'm going to do a side posture on his T9 rib. Lay on your right side, face me. Now, I, I challenged it. It's posterior inferior, so I want to think of that when I adjust it. Most of adjusting is setting up the body in the physical world. The mental aspect of it is, this is what I'm gonna do to the rib, and you're gonna set your body to your best idea, and you try to perform it to your best, and that's all it takes. Results may vary.
take a breath in, let it go. side bring this up and just recheck into the rib hold just as it did then I'm going to tonify because you do pulses uh, muscles alarm that's to diagnose and then to treat is adjust we already checked the supplements so supplement adjust and tonify SAT so his is on this side you can take your hand out if you want so a tonification point is kind of at the base of the triangle of the posterior aspect of the, fe of, of the femur head, um, the femur shaft, and the medial hamstring. You just find a, a tender spot like right there. And you just rub it. If you're licensed, you can needle it, laser it. Um, this is very crude use of the acupuncture system. It's a, I'm just tonifying, I think it's called the source point liver when you do basic AK you just you just do very basic points but what's remarkable is it actually shows through muscle testing how Chinese medicine is like has always been a part of mother nature or just verifies that it's actually there there we go good job okay I'll hold straight Take this hand. So I'm going to go back to the alarm point, and that is my best way to go. Did I do everything I can for the liver channel? And push towards this hand. It says I need to do more work. Okay. Take this away. So you, I had already tested a supplement. So when you find a meridian and you want to do some nutrition or check, don't fix it. Check all the other factors. Check the neurolymphatic, neurovascular, all those things because you might lose the opportunity to find out what his body needs to fix itself. Goodhart used to rub these points and he would, in his mind, create the color that stimulates them. Ooh, right there. So for liver, it's green. That alarm point says it's good. I'm going to go to that neurolymphatic on the other side. Push. And that just blows them right out. I want to do that neurolymphatic. I'm going there because this organ can do it, you know, because it, 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 it drains through the lymph as well as the veins. You really want to do a good neurolymphatic. Whoa, almost fell over. Well, I pulled it out of the hat. So the fifth, sixth intercostal space right on the TPs, you just rub really hard. Like 18 with George Picard. Now, it's because we're eating so much margarine and not eating lard, lard that makes it hard on our liver to impart its health and its flow. Because it's the meridian from Chinese medicine that fosters things to grow. Front two. So this is the neurolymphatic. It's also called the Chapman's reflex point. So doing all this based on that he had high liver enzymes, I haven't seen the test yet. This is not specific as to why they're elevated. From my understanding, when I see patients with elevated liver enzymes, frequently in my population base to get a second test and they're lowered. I think it was like 68, 69. 68. Uh, ideally in a functional medicine practice between 20 and 30. But we don't know which enzymes, I'm assuming it's one of the ALT, AST, OPP, you know, whatever. <laughs> ASAP. Push towards this hand. 
turn it on. Just wait a second. There she goes. Yeah, it still has it. Got to get in there more. Okay, great. Well, I want to get the the flushing out of your face. Maybe I can. That'd be awesome. Down to the pubic bone, pubic bone, lay face up. Can you adjust my pubic bone? Yes. That doesn't seem fun. Well, so on the very anterior part of the pubic bone, I take the patient's hand. Ah. Right here is going to be tender. The obliques, especially the external, external oblique. There we go, it's right here. Good, so you sit up. Less pain coming up. So it's still there. Still there? Yeah. Just bring your knees together. The first time you came up, you winched. The second time, you didn't winch. Was it less? I think that it was just refocused. Then you just, this is that point where I go, walk around and see how you feel. Still feels caught, but definitely not as caught. Not as caught. Yeah. Do you notice with a breath in, breath out, or moving your arm around? Breathing in, you kind of as a breathing in, I still feel it back there. Check for thoracic fixations. So this is classic AK. One fist here, one fist there. Me? Yeah. Bring your elbows together. Squeeze together. And he's got it on. All right, arms to your sides. The reason for that is that he notices it with motion. So fixations will show up with muscle weakness with motion. One hand here, one hand there. So can you touch me? No. You can't? No way. Oh, wow. Look at you go. Okay, so I'll challenge it. He wants to be fixed from the bottom. I'm going to challenge it and push it. Sit up, face the window. I don't feel like I got it. So I'm going to do the lift. Scooch back towards me. This is really good for upper fixations in the thoracic. So arms out like an airplane. Put your hands on top of mine. See, and he's, he's really too big for me to do the standing one. So this is how I do it in an office with sitting. Bring your head back. Let me have your weight. There we go. Oh, yeah. Lay face down. 
Tommy is an admitted chiropractic junkie, which helps. Bring one fist here, one fist there. Bring your elbows together. And squeeze. Squeeze again. Okay, we got some more in the mix. In the mix. Wouldn't you know it? Right around nine and ten. If you suspect that you keep challenging it until you go, okay, I convince myself there's nothing there. Good. And take a breath in. Let it out. And again. Oh, shit. <laughs> one hand here, one hand there. Squeeze your elbows together. Good. Stand up, take a breath, see if that's better. Yeah, and so now it's kind of rolled into more, like, I'm not feeling it on my spine. I'm yeah. just kind of feeling it right here. Does it still feel like a pinch? Yeah. Damn it. Well, we're going to have to cut this off and let me think. All right, so we're back. So when we last started, Tom had all the pain going on wrong, wrong here in the back arm, and he has some here, and I'm like, shit, what do I do? <laughs> so and then I thought, Dural twerking. So I had him lay on the table. I had him bite and open, okay, without a TL, which is the TMJ. But you can access the TMJ as another way of stressing the dura, as a way of getting it. And he had two fixations. And when uh, Dr. David Leaf says, when you have fixations, you have dural twerk. So I had him bite muscles universally working, weaken, which could be a neurological tooth. And, uh, but I had him TL where the dura attaches. His occiput didn't show when he was biting, it was still weak. He touched his, his C1 on the right and it got it strong. So in order to make this video shorter, I went ahead and adjusted it just seconds ago. And then, but before I did is I had him stand up and it had pain with breathing. And I took his atlas, that TL that it wanted that, challenged it from lateral to medial and it took the pain out. So I made the adjustment and then we got the result we did. So that's a dural uh, situation there. I just didn't know where it would take us. It couldn't take us down a rabbit hole, as you know. So I'm hoping this video helps you. I'm thinking about you guys. Don't be so freaked out about the quarantine because you're guaranteed to get greater because all the great people who've ever been great in this world have always been thrown into a dungeon and came out of it bigger. I mean, look, Nelson Mandela. You can do it. See you next whatever time.